You might have a good transceiver and an effective antenna, but both are not effective unless you also have low feed line loss. How much loss should coax cable have? It varies. The thicker the cable, generally the lower the loss. These figures are for RG58 coax. I got them from an online calculator. 10 metres gives a loss of 0.7 of a dB on 30 megahertz, rising to over 3 dB on 432 megahertz. Generally speaking, you'd want to keep your cable loss to less than 1 dB. That way, at least 80% of the signal from your transceiver gets to the antenna. Whereas if your loss is 3 dB, then that means that half of your signal gets gobbled up in heating the coax, not making it to the antenna at all. Secondly, particularly on UHF, coax loss reduces your ability to hear weak signals. You also need a short jumper cable to go between your transceiver and RF power meter. This one is about a meter long. For the purpose of this exercise, we'll assume its loss is zero and use this as a reference. Right now we've got the short length of cable between the transceiver and the RF power meter and that will give our reference power indication. Because this instrument was designed for 27 MHz CB, I'm not going to trust its results, particularly on VHF and UHF. But you'll still be able to see the relative loss when we substitute the shorter feed line for the longer feed line that we'll be testing. And to confirm we're getting sensible results, I'll do a cross check with this higher performance RF power meter. When you're doing these tests, it's important that you're using a constant carrier mode, either CW or FM. We'll just check our power meter with the one meter length reference jumper cable between the transceiver and it. This is on 3.5 megahertz. It's reading five watts, which is as it should be. I'll go up to a few other bands. This is 14 megahertz and again, five watts. This is 28 megahertz, and again, five watts. Up here on 50 megahertz, it's dropped. It's reading a bit under four watts. On 144 megahertz, it's even lower at two and a half watts. And 432 megahertz, it's almost not useful at all, reading about 0.2 of a watt. In fact, I wouldn't even trust it on 432 megahertz because look at the VSWR, high SWR. Whereas even on two meters, it appears one to one. We'll try our second meter. This is at 28 megahertz and it's showing about 71 or 72. This is not a direct reading instrument. If we look on the back panel, you can see that's almost exactly five watts. Go up to six meters and it's a similar reading. At two meters, very, very similar, about 70. On 70 centimeters, it's a lower reading, about 67 or 68. With eight meters of cable inserted at 28 megahertz, we're down to four watts. 144 megahertz, we're down to about 1.6 watts. The thing notable here is that the VSWR indicated on the transceiver has dropped a lot. That's a thing to be mindful of with lossy cable. You might think your antenna is all set up right with low VSWR, but in fact a suspiciously flat VSWR curve 
going across the band and seeing no variation in the VSWR could indicate that your cable is lossy and although the VSWR may indicate as low not much of your transmitted signal is making it to the antenna whereas if I was using a good length of cable or a short length with low loss like what I tried before then the VSWR would be much higher these are the numbers with the 8 meter of cable Next thing is our longest length of cable. Again, it's RG58 and about 15 meters long. This is 28 megahertz with our longest length of cable at 15 meters. And it's dropping down to about 3.4 watts. At 144 megahertz, it's dropping down to barely one watt, about 1.1. On 432 megahertz, it's the same reading as we got before, about 0.2. And as you can see, the VSWR is even lower. You could probably connect almost any load to the end of this cable, and because it's so lossy, the VSWR would be low. This is why it's misleading to do detailed antenna tests at the end of a long piece of coax feed line. Now we're on meter B, and on 28 megahertz, we're up to about 71. So it would seem there's hardly any loss at 28 megahertz. At 50 megahertz though there's a bit and at 144 we're about 67 that is less than a watt I've just gone in to convert some of these ratios to decibels to compare the cables with each other and with the reference and also the different results I got with the meters and if we look at our 8 meter cable at 144 megahertz which I think is the best frequency to properly indicate the loss we go from 2.5 watts indicated on meter a down to 1.6 watts and that is a loss of two decibels that's for eight meters of cable now if you were to compare it with the specification at 144 megahertz 10 meters of RG 58 should lose about 1.6 decibels so that indicates that this is a bit more lossy than average and probably unacceptable. You might use it for casual field day type applications, but for a home station, you'd ideally want to do better than that. If we have a look at the effect of doubling its length for using different cable, the 15 meters, we had a loss of 3.5 dB, which is more than half your signal. 2.5 watts going in, 1.1 coming out then when we look at meter B we had 5 watts going in or at least 5 watts with the reference cable with the 8 meter cable measured 4.5 watts out and the difference between 5 watts and 4.5 watts it's a loss of about 0.5 of a dB I'm highly suspicious of that number because the spec for the cable is that 10 meters of cable gives you 1.6 dB loss so you'd be expecting 8 meters to give around 1.4 dB loss something like that definitely not 0.5 so I would really question that number if we look at our 15 meter cable though we go from 5 watts in to 2 watts out which is a loss of 4 decibels and that is worse than specified and clearly indicates that this cable is really not ideal the other thing that's interesting is if we compare the two meter readings even though meter A is obviously not designed for 2 meters it was reading 2.5 watts with 5 watts going in whereas meter B was reading 5 watts so that would have been okay uh, with meter A we go from 2.5 to 1.1 watt which is a loss of 3.5 decibels meter b 5 watts down to 2 watts which is a minus 4 decibels so the loss of 3.5 and the loss of 4 db is close enough to be reasonably trusting of the reading that we got with this so the outlier appears to be this figure here and if we compare the ratio then of course the loss of the 15 meter cable should be 
all things being equal, about double the loss with the 8 meter cable. And even worse, if we were to join the two together, um, you'd be getting a loss of you add 2 dB plus 3.5 dB, that gives you 5.5 decibels. It's nearly a loss of 75%. That would be a loss of 6 dB. 6 dB is quite significant. Not to mention the noise figure impacts in the receiver. Nevertheless, I have had long distance contacts with that sort of loss, but you won't be one of the strong stations at all if you were to tolerate that sort of feed line loss. As far as 70 centimeters, I don't trust the numbers, but in this case, with meter B, we started off with 2.5 dB. We got down to one watt, which is minus four dB. And that is slightly worse than 3.1 dB, which you'd have with two spec cable 10 meters long. In this case, eight meters of cable lost four dB signal. And with a 15 meter length of cable, we lost 5.5 decibels of signal. Uh, went from 2.5 to 0.7 watt. Yeah, so it's pretty crude, but I've just described a simple way of getting a rough idea of loss in coax cable. So, particularly on VHF, UHF frequencies, loss is fairly important. Below 30 megahertz, the loss, even with quite poor cable, is low. But on UHF, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, then it can be quite critical. 